Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification button. And in the description of this video, you can find information on joining our pay private patron community and our detailing fundamentals course where you can get your car fully machined and detailed like the black peril in the background. Anyway, today we are looking at the Auto Finesse Graphene Filler Liquid Wax. So we got a graphene, red alert, controversial. We got a graphene liquid wax here. Now, before we get started on the review, the thing that struck, strikes me first is use of that word filler. Filler means like a resin, you know, or something that fills scratches. And then when it, when it erodes or weathers out of the panel, then the scratches come back. So it's a dirty word in the detailing scene. So it's nice that they're prepared to use it in a product to let you know that it's going to fill. So you're going to get some correction by filling. Anyway, you get the idea. The next thing you need to know about this product is it's available in Halfords. I've just gone and bought it and it cost £25, but there's always discounts and there's some join up to the Halfords Motoring Club discount or something like that. Or if you've got a trade card, it's cheaper. But I think, I believe the RRP is roughly £25 for 500 mil. Let me give you some alternatives. The Turtle Wax to the Max Graphene Wax is around about £30 for 414 mil, roughly. Check that price for me, please. And to give you another example, Colonite 815, which is a traditional liquid wax, is typically 18 to 20 pounds for about the same amount. It might be 16 fluid jibber jabbers, so it might be a bit less, give or take. But the key information is that a liquid wax for half a litre of it typically can cost around about bottom of market, you know, maybe 15 pounds, all the way up to sort of 30 pounds. So the price of this, considering it's the latest tech, is actually okay. Um, would I pay £25 to try this if I wasn't doing a review on it? Yeah, I will. I, I've paid more, so I will, but it's you've got the comparisons. What are the product claims, guys, before we get stuck in and show you what this goes on like? An advanced, so super sealant, so it's a paintwork sealant, um, but it's also got the word wax in it, so it's a, maybe that implies it's got some organic waxes. Who knows? That's a question, actually. That's a good question. You're not too bad, John. <laughs> An advanced liquid paintwork sealant developed to add extreme gloss and durable ultra hydrophobic protection. Okay, we'll check how ultra hydrophobic implies it's going to be really, really extreme. Graphene usually lowers the, the hydrophobicity, in my experience at least. Okay, protection that lasts up to six months. Okay, six months is a typical claim of sealants, but you often find products fail to sort of really do that and they all tail off not not i haven't used this yet but that generally my experience of sealants and waxes and all this stuff is they zing for a few washes you know depending on how you prep them and then you lose the zing after a month or two and then after you know a few months they look pretty dead um okay infused with graphene a form of carbon that's a hundred times stronger than steel um, this next generation super sealant bonds to the paintwork on a molecular level. Okay, but I'm not sure if the graphene does. It depends what's in it. It'll be the sealant that does, and the graphene will be in the sealant, you know, bound with binders to keep it in there, because typically graphene is a, is a um, you know, micronized powder dispersion you can add to a sealant. Um, the ultimate performance coating for any paintwork type. So you might hear that, and you might be going, ooh, that's a bit over the top. Well, graphene is an interesting material. The alternative that they could put, it's got graphene in it, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> no one's going to say that. So you've got to allow a little bit of creative license, haven't you? Right, directions for use, guys. These are really important. We must follow the destructions, okay? So we're going to follow the destructions, sorry, the instructions. Now, the first thing I've noticed, it doesn't say to shake the bottle anywhere. Apologies if I'm wrong but I can't see that on there. If you can see it, it does not say to shake the bottle. When I first got this and I was in Halfords, I just always like to take the lid off. Um, I've given it a good shake, but when I took the lid off initially, the top was more sort of watery and solventy. And then when you shake it up, it becomes one homogeneous, <laughs> homogeneous solution. So, um, in other words, I think, I believe it needs a little bit of a shake and that probably should be on the instructions. 
Okay, ensure the vehicle is clean and dry before application. That has been machined polished with H8, a pure abrasive, and then degreased with a hydrocarbon and wiped over with a clean microfiber cloth. You can see there that I've got another product that is currently curing out, and I'm gonna go ahead and install that on there. So we've, we've followed the instructions so far. It's dry as well. Add three pea-sized drops to a foam applicator pad. So here we have a clean foam applicator pad. I want you to see this. I want you to see it and feel everything. <laughs> so let's give it a good shake up. These bottles are nice. There's no chokage. The labels are really nice. They've got all the relevant health and safety warnings on there, which is important. Um, there's no seal on this. So, yeah, you do have to be careful, don't you, when you're popping these up after you shake them. You get the old splatter, you know, that flicks off. So you just be careful with that. And let's put three, how many drops? Three to four, so we're gonna go three. Is that a P? It's a little petit pois. There we go, three petit pois. We're doing quite a small section here. Just note everything. I've tried to put that out there carefully. So you get a little bit of thingage. So you would just use, you would just use your applicator to clean now or it's gonna get greasy with the, you know, not greasy, but you're gonna get the product there. So the next thing is to work it one panel at a time, applying to the entire area in a small circular motion. Circular motion, oh my God, it's controversial. Your scratches won't be aligned. Always, people always say that whenever I do it in straight lines. So here we go. Let's, I'm not gonna dab it all out, but then let's just follow the instructions. Small circular motions. What am I feeling here? I'm feeling this is fine. This feels just very familiar. It's not quite as draggy as a wax. It feels a bit, even though it says it's got hydrocarbon in it, it feels a little bit like it's water-based as well. So it might be an emulsion. Right, I'm not gonna do anything other than the instructions. So we've done that in little tiny circles. There's a bit of excess product there. So I'll just work that in little circles. Make sure we go right up to the edges in little circles. There, we've got nice coverage. And I don't think we've used excess product, which can sometimes be, a, you know, a cause of concern. Now, this is another observation on the product. There's no information on cure time. So I've followed that. Now it says remove excess residue and buff to a high gloss finish with fresh microfiber. So I'm gonna follow the instructions. There's no nothing there about waiting, okay? Um, this is critical. You know, if it said wait for five to ten minutes for the product to cure, then I'll wait five to ten, but it doesn't. It just says apply in circles, then remove any excess residue. So that's what we've got to do. Let's go. That's really nice. Yeah, well, that's really nice. It's glossing up. It doesn't feel sticky at all. And under the microfiber, it's slicking up. That's nice. It's really nice, in fact, it's really nice. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be wet and smeary, but no, following the instructions, that feels good. Right, this has been on for its cure time, so let me do a flip and get the old corner fold. So we'll give this a bit of a buffage now. It's just a liquid wax. Let's get the, the edges. Got a bit of chalkiness in there. Especially on the edge of the tape line. That feels nice as well, but yeah, it's not as nice as the, not as nice as the graphene, but nice. Feels really good. Let's go back to another side. In fact, let's just leave it. Let's just leave it. Get, get all that off. Right, so we have two applied products. Interesting. Now, I want to do. Oh, Christ, nearly caught myself on one of my hooks. I want to do the slickness test immediately. So we have the auto finesse graphene. 
fact, let's put these level here and here. Okay, here we go. So auto finesse on the left. Oh, let's make sure they're exactly level. Tilt, 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 tilt. Du, 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 du. I've never done one of these tests where a liquid wax has out slicked a graphene product or an SO, yeah, there it goes, <laughs> or an SO2 product. Right, so the graphene has lower friction. I've swapped them around. Let's put them over here as well, roughly the same place, and let's do that again. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? This doesn't have any SiO2 in it. You can feel, you can feel that it's slicker. Um, so that's good. First product claim, guys, is that the slickness is better than a traditional wax, and you should be able to feel that with a graphene product. Gloss. And filling, let me just get a torchy. I'm not going to be getting the gloss meter out, and I'll explain why in a second. We've got to get a move on here. Don't, that patchiness is running out of clear coat, not the product. Look at the reflection. This, that's a deep scratch. This panel, look. That's really impressive. Yeah. I'm just wondering if that's outside of where I hit with the polish. It wasn't though. That got polished there as well. It's not, that's really filled. That's really filled well. Let's just get this in. So is the wax though. Yeah, that's doing, uh, yeah, they both are filled well. Really impressive actually. Both those products have done a good job. So I'm gonna say, you can see the reflection there of the tree. There it is. Oh, there it is, yeah, it just goes out, it reflects, it gets focus on the tape and then there it comes back. I'm gonna say both these products, to my eyes, and I'm just gonna use my eyes in this, just done a great job of glossing up the panel. You know, most waxes and things will, but fair play, good gloss and slickness. Now what I'm gonna to do to be fair, is I'm just gonna leave these products for 24 hours on the panel. And then tomorrow I'll poke water at them and then I'll poke detergent at them and see if there's any improvements with the sealant over the liquid wax and durability. And then I'll leave it at that and finish off the review. Um, and I'll leave it at that, I've got more to say, but I'll save it for the end of the video. Okay guys, we are gonna do some gloss meter readings, why not? So we're gonna take our rope point IQ, take three readings on each side. So here's the auto finesse graphene. Oh, camera's playing, doing funny things. Focus, there we go, 91.3, focus. What's going on with the focus here? There we go, 90.9, a bit lower down. Focus, as I say, 86.7, a lower one down there. So what's our average stat? 89.7, 20 degree gloss. Well, let's clear that off. Sorry, clear all the data. Okay, let's take three more for the liquid wax. So wax versus graphene, 89.7, eighty four point nine, 86.7, there's definitely an improvement. There's definitely an improvement on gloss with the graphene product. So, what's the average? 87.120 degree gloss. So, that's significant, a few units down. So, 
on the gloss front, the graphene product has won over a normal liquid wax. Okay guys, we're gonna look at the hydrophobicity now and the beadage. Interesting. So, the one thing I can see, that pooling. Versus no pooling. Let's just go on low pressure. Yeah, look at that. That's consistent with graphene. It's gonna break through now, there it goes, look. I can't pull, I can't pull this product. Very interesting, I don't need to test any more than that. So, if you don't like products that sheet, so this pushes the water off and you're getting a bung dry thing. So there is some something in that. You're gonna like auto finesse. If you want something that beads, you're not gonna like this graphene product because it's not beady. So hydro hydrophobicity goes to the liquid wax. So next up guys, we're just gonna spray our favored Surfex HD all over this. So let's do it. Work it into the surface with a soft tip brush so we're not sort of scrubbing the protection off. I'm going to take this tape off as well. Work it into the liquid wax. Do the same thing all over there. I'm going to unpeel this tape. Or else you get that wet, it's going to start sticking on there. Anyway, I'll do that. I'm going to leave that on there for 45 minutes to an hour and rinse off and see which is the most degraded. Okay guys, let's do the blast down, the durability test. Oof. Here we go. Let's get the chemicals off. That's come off the tape, that's all the dried wax to buff that off. It's really interesting. Really interesting. Right, hold on a second. Just want to buff. Make sure I get a clean side. There we go. Just want to pick up that water. Really good. They're very similar now. That's definitely working still though. That's really good. Interesting. Right. You've seen all you need to see. I'm gonna conclude this video. Okay guys, so let's do the conclusions of the Auto Finesse Graphene Filler Liquid Wax in this, from what we've tested, okay? So the price, it loses out to the liquid wax, which works out about sort of 15 quid for the equivalent amount rather than 25. So it's, you can get cheaper um, alternatives to this, but we've talked about all of the other options on price. So it's not actually too bad for a graphene product. Slickness, it wins over a liquid wax. I'm starting to see that most graphene pro products do seem slick. Application, this is nicer than a liquid wax. It has no cure time according to the instructions. 
it buffs nicer. It doesn't have any kind of uh, solvent honk or any sort of chalkiness to it. So it's, it's really nice. It does apply well. Gloss, you saw the results. So on, on average, we got 89.7 over three readings and 87.1. And so it beat the liquid wax. And I think both of them did a good job on filling the swirls, but it seemed to um, make the panel look nice. And it was, it was a horrible panel that's been hit with wool. So there's a good filling, filling effect from it, which is cool. So it did well on that. Now, here's the bad thing. Beadage. This is the most important thing of the review. Um, you would not buy this product for its beads or for its hydrophobicity. And this is why we do these reviews, because it says on the product instructions that it's ultra hydrophobic. Um, you can see it there somewhere. Ultra hydrophobic. Uh, well, I don't know what ultra hydrophobic means, but from all of the products I've seen, in my opinion... It's a slow sheeting action rather than a really high contact angle beading product. Um, and again, the thing that I'm starting to learn is that when you add graphene, it seems to lower the hydrophobicity. Now, here's the really interesting thing is it was so unaffected by the chemicals. You know, this one was absolutely crazy beading, but after an hour of Surfex HD on it, they looked identical, whereas this hadn't slowed down at all. So it's totally unaffected by the... Um, by the uh, chemicals, which is interesting. Now, the problem this product might suffer from, we did a review of a product called 303 Graphene not so long ago, and people said in the comments, this 303 Graphene has awful durability, like it didn't last two weeks on my car. Well, the problem is, because it's not very hydrophobic, um, it doesn't look that much different to, a, to not having the protection on there. It's quite subtle. Um, but the 303 for me is a really durable sealant. I mean, it claim, claims a year. They wouldn't be making that claim if it only lasted two weeks, okay? So the problem is, the problem this product, the, the Auto Finesse Graphene could suffer from is because it's not highly hydrophobic, it's not able to demonstrate durability well, and that might make it unpopular. Um, but it would be possibly a false perception from what I'm seeing. So overall, it's picked up more ticks than crosses over a, over a liquid wax, which is interesting. I mean, this is you'll get my initial thoughts on this, guys. Um, so there it is. Don't buy this if you want a beading product. Buy this if you want to try graphene. If you like working with liquid products, which are easy to apply, you can use small amounts to cover large areas. You can buff it immediately. It is going to fill and look glossy and slick under the buffage. We've covered everything in this review. I'm gonna stop here. What I'm gonna say now is I am building up nine liquid waxes and sealants to do a proper comparison on where we don't just hit them with detergent on that panel and leave it for an hour, where we section off the panel and leave it outside and probably also put them on a real car sectioned off in, in nine squares and let that car drive around and do a proper, you know, Thing, and then we'll do proper test panel stuff with gloss meters and we'll go to town and back on the nine products. I'm just getting a flavor for them and giving you a flavor for them. Um, so overall, you've had my thoughts on that. Just um, the instructions could be improved by shaking the bottle as well. That was another thing that I noticed, okay? And perhaps use, use of the word impermeable barrier or whatever the word was. Got to get this right because you don't want to make it unfair. Yeah, offering a perm impermeable barrier that's slightly harder than any clear coat layer. Uh, I'm not sure about that claim, you know, because you know it might give the impression that your paintwork has got a sort of physical protection that isn't there. And, you know, these products can't really give you that physical protection, so that could possibly be reworded. Uh, or but are they just talking about graphene in general? That's the problem. I'm try trying to be very careful. Um, but overall, you get the idea. I've demonstrated you the product. You've seen it. Going to be interesting to see how this video goes when we get them all out and compare them. It's a really cracking lineup as well. And um, I'm going to be really interested to see how well this does overall. We know it's going to lose marks in the hydrophobicity, So it's a disadvantage in this test. But can it bridge the gap? by outperforming the products in all the other areas. The only way to find out 
is to hit that subscribe button and that video will be coming along in the next few months. I'll announce the lineup as well. Take care guys, bye for now. Was I when